Welcome back. Let's get my next guest out. He's a platinum-selling jazz superstar. Will you please welcome the one and only Jamie Cullum, ladies and gentlemen. Here he is. <laughs> Jamie, you do. You still look so young. I can't believe uh, you're now a grown man with uh, the wife and children. Because you got married to Sophie, was it... How long ago was it you got married to Sophie? Don't oh, don't ask me questions like that. You don't know, it was, here, 2010. I've got it written down. 2010. Okay. So you guys, you have two children. We do. And how was Christmas with them? I guess they're old enough to know what's going on now. Certainly the two-year-old. Yeah, it, it's pretty intense, Christmas with young kids, actually. I, I kind of... I now realise why my parents never put Christmas presents out before Christmas. Of course. Because you can't explain to a two-year-old that no Christmas day isn't today and well, you can't open these presents because they're not for you. No, or... no, you can't put them out because you haven't got them yet because Santa brings them during the night. Well, that's true. That, that did happen, but um, we, we were at nursery and Santa Claus made, made an appearance in this one little girl said, I don't like that Christmas man. <laughs> he was, he was, I mean, um, he was pretty monstrous. Was he, was, he one of those yeah. ones who smelt of rum? Well, his, be his beard was kind of coming out of his ear. It was wow. Really good, yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, that happens to me. I just trim it. That's what you have to do. You get older, you'll find it. Uh, OK, you are a tremendously gifted musician. I'm sure everyone knows that. But you, you've kept everyone waiting quite a while for this new album. Now, why is that? Why has it been? It's been three years since the last one? I, I guess uh, I, the thing is, I, I tour everywhere. So I kind of, I, I do, obviously, I do the stuff here in the UK and then I go to, you know, America and, and I, I do lots of stuff in, in Asia and the rest of Europe as well. So it takes a while to get around the world. Um, but three years is a long time. Is it? Is that yeah, a long time? I think so, for doing it an album. Well, I'm, I've, made, I've, I've, made another, I've made another record which I hope come out next year as well. So, so I'm, you, I'm, done, I'm, you did two I'm in I'm getting a bit years. faster now. I'm getting okay. a bit faster. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now, how did this come about? I think it was the movie, wasn't it? You became quite friendly with Clint Eastwood. Yeah, I did. Uh, I, I wrote a song um, for the movie... Gran Torino. It well, it's my, a tremendous film. He directed that as well, didn't he? I he think. did, yeah. It, I know his son, Kyle Eastwood, really well. He's a great jazz musician, and he was the one that kind of got me involved in it, and I met Clint through him, and I ended up writing the song with, with Clint and his son. Wow. Uh, which but he's been a jazz fan since the 60s, hasn't he? I mean, he's he a major jazz fan. knows his music like, like you wouldn't believe. If you talk to him about music, he'll, he, he won't stop, you know. Yeah. Was he specific as to what he wanted for the film when he asked you to compose this? He was, he was pretty specific, because actually he kind of composed the first part of the melody, like a really simple kind of piano me melody, which he's done on some of his films before. And then he, we recorded the song in his house, and he wanted it done like a... Wow you know, one or two takes. He didn't want to do it loads of times, like a kind of jazz performance. Yeah. And I played it once for him and they recorded it and then he, he kind of sidled up to me and said, can you, can you play it again? But, uh, like, you're the last guy in a nightclub and there's only two chicks left, you know. That's a really bad Clint. That's, that's nearly as bad as one of your impressions, actually. Get out of here, man! What are you talking about? <laughs> And so he, he, just, he, gives really, he gives really good, you know, direction, I guess, like, like he does his films. But the whole thing was magical for me. He's a way. great, you know, a huge talent. What a, what a great, uh, fun thing I would have thought to hang out with him at his house. That must be quite Yeah, fun. especially because he likes to talk music. You know, I wasn't, I, I was asking questions about music and he was, he liked to talk about it, definitely. And he must have seen some of the jazz greats who are no longer with us, I would have thought. He went partying with Miles Davis in New York in, wow. the, you know, in, the, in the late... 50s, early 60s. Yeah. Wow. Do you feel a bit out of time in that respect? I mean, the fact that, you know, you, you've made a huge success of it, but th that's when jazz was the cool music. And mm. now it's still cool in its own way, but it's one of many, many different kinds of cool music. And th that's when it yeah. was at the centre of it all. I, I don't think so. I, I kind of discovered jazz through listening to hip-hop, really. So I, I, I kind of got it through the sample way and the acid jazz thing going on in the 90s. So I kind of discovered it in a modern way and I'm always, always trying to mix it up with those things anyway. Well, you've worked with some of the modern hip-hop guys, haven't you? Yeah, I, I, well, I, I did, I did uh, get to know Pharrell pretty well after uh, uh, I did a cover of his song on Radio 1 eight, ages ago now, about eight years ago, of, of Frontin. And I met him at the Brits, and then we, I spent about ten days in his company in Miami, which was the, the weirdest ten days of my life. And is it, there was, is it P. Diddy, or is he now, what is his name now? Is he P. Diddy still, or is he Puff Daddy? Is he going back to Puff, or what is his name? I don't know, I think, I think it's Diddy. It's Diddy, just yeah. Diddy? We, yeah, we went to his, we went to his, one of the many things we did, uh, we spent a lot of time in the studio, and we went to some parties, and I, I was literally like this weird, kind of extra from Bugsy Malone, kind of following him around, in his, you know, incredible life of, you know, what he was doing. He's, he's an amazing guy now, I watched him work, and we got to do some stuff together, and one day, they said, uh, oh, we're going to go to Diddy's house for, for a party. I'm like, oh, my God, you know, this, this is going to be like the MTV party that I've always wanted to go to, that you dream about going to. So I left the studio and I spent all afternoon looking for the correct pair of trainers. So Because you, right? you're going to Diddy's crib, well, you yeah. want to make sure you've got the right wheels on. I just, that's... 
Yeah, yeah, that, you, you could say that, yeah. Uh, I, I went looking for the right pair of wheels. It took me all afternoon, but I found these really amazing pair of gold Nikes, which, wow. were, which were really good. And I wore just, just, I wore like a really, just a simple outfit on top because the gold Nikes were yeah, the you important. Yeah, the shoes do the talking, yeah. And we get in the Escalade and we go to Diddy's house, amazing house. So you've got an, Escal an Escalade, is the big kind of... Yeah, uh, massive, massive big car. show-off car with the wheels spinning. It was, uh, you know, it was, it was all, the, the scene was set perfectly. And it's weird, as we were driving up to the house, it didn't look like there were many people there. Like, this is, this is weird. And we got there and I, I realised that it was actually like a really small dinner party. <laughs> and not only that, it was actually a shoes off house. <laughs> so I, I had to take my shoes off and I was wearing these horrific Bart Simpson socks with a, ho <laughs> with, a, with a hole in. So I'm walking around P. Diddy's house wearing like basically, you know, terrible outfit and a pair of Bart Simpson socks. <laughs> and there's like 10 people there. Well, they probably thought you were like a 10-year-old. That's what it was. Yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> Who I brought know. the kid in the Bart Simpson socks? Get they, back upstairs to bed. They, I, honestly, I was constantly kind of, uh, just kind of trying to follow, going, oh, I'm the guy, I'm the guy who plays the piano, <laughs> uh, Now, you're going to play for us this evening. Yeah. Uh, what song are you going to do? I'm going to play a song called When I Get Famous. Okay, here's the album, Momentum. Uh, it's a great track, it's a very upbeat track. I like it, some great music on there. Momentum's the album, ladies and gentlemen. He's going to perform for us live right now. Mr. Jamie Callum. <laughs> okay, off you go and get yourself ready. Thanks to all my guests tonight. Next week I'll be joined by Karen Brady, Torval and Dean, Aaron Eckhart will be here, and Griff Reese Jones, and we've got music from Codeline. But now, with When I Get Famous, it's Jamie Cullum. The time is hiding in my hands. We're gonna cut through the windows. Ain't no one messing with my plans. Right now my star is in limbo. Sit back and watch my scrawny frame And they your feelings All the years you caused me pain I got some wounds that need healing One, two, three Just too damn aloof Wearing your Morrissey t-shirt The kind of girl that's born for you Well that's a blessing and some curse I tell you some be rare of those Who be too early Cause all that magic can't be froze And now it's you ain't worthy so baby, when I get famous, everybody's gonna see it. Whoa, oh, oh, you never really knew me. Does it make sense to simplify? Now we're not eating riddles. But I don't care, do you know why? The clothes are falling like skittles. Whoever said you need a right to tame your beauty I'll say goodbye to lonely nights Girls from an orderly cute please So baby when I get famous Everybody's gonna see you Given knowledge, given time I take us out of recession I tell the world that all is fine That your freedom's a blessing Cause when I'm looking from the top You all seem smaller And that's the one thing I am not That's the one who is taller so baby, when I get famous, and everybody's gonna see it.
And Jonathan's back at 9.45 next Saturday. Well, tomorrow night, from some of the greats to those who just gave it their best, some of your favourites will be back together for the last ever series of Dancing on Ice, live at 6.15. Then it's an all-star family fortunes after that at 7.45. And at nine, Griff Reese jones has been sneaking around the edit suites for some all-new outtakes for it'll be all right on the night. <laughs>